Hey everybody, Anthony here. Good morning. It is uh, Sunday, October 13th, 2024. And uh, it's just probably a little after 10 a.m. in the morning here. Just finished up a workout and I was listening to some uh, ham radio, uh, both the HF and the uh, two meter radio. And on the two meter radio, I happened to pick up a conversation of a couple guys that were in South Carolina and they were talking about, you know, the uh, upcoming elections. And I just so happened to record a little piece of what they were saying. I'll post it in another video. But one of them was expressing his concern of um, um, that he's afraid that there might be something big that happens like uh, that would cause a lockdown or a, uh, um, a martial law type situation leading up to the elections where they'll be canceled or postponed, etc. So it's, it's on a lot of people's minds. And then it brings me to the title of my devotional this morning that I wanted to do. I've entitled it, uh, Not a Pretty Picture. And it's from the book of Lamentations, chapter 5. And uh, I think I talked about it in a previous video. Go back and read the book of Jeremiah and then into Lamentations, where Jeremiah wrote also. And um, I'm skipping to chapter 5 here, which is the last chapter because I wanted to get this one up there, but I have other studies on the previous chapters. But one of the things that reminds me of uh, this period of time and the period of time we're in now, it's it wasn't a pretty picture for, for Jerusalem and Judah in that time. They were taken over by their enemies, the Babylonians. They were conquered, and it was allowed to happen by the Most High because of their great sin. And in chapter 4, uh, it mentions that their sin was greater than the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. So what they were doing in Israel at that point, and these were supposed to be Yah's people, was greater than the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. So just think of how heinous some of the things they were doing back then. And then what Yah allowed to happen to them. We're going to look at that right now. And what Jeremiah laments in this, um, in this writing. And it brings to mind us today in this country, America. We have committed great, great sins. And I won't go into long uh, details on what those are. But you kind of see, looking at what's happening in the mainstream, what's going on in government, what's going on with individual people, what's going on in Hollywood, in athletes, in movie stars, and just ordinary, regular American people just going from bad to worse. And then we see peppered in there some of the good uh, that's still there. There's always a remnant. But let's get started in chapter 5. And in the first two verses, Jeremiah says this, Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. So he's, you know, petitioning God uh, here. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our homes to aliens. And just think of where we are today in America. Our country has been given over or is being given over to a people that are not from here, that are not, that are being brought here illegally by our leaders. And just think of what Jeremiah laments here, strangers in our homes, in our country, and he mentions aliens, okay? So people not from here, not part of Israel at the time. Um, and then in this chapter, Jeremiah pleads with the Lord to remember his people's desperate situation and to restore them. So he admits what the sin and what they did and what's come upon them, the captivity in Babylon, um, but he's also petitioning for restoration. He's interceding for them. And that's what those of us that are believers should be doing for our own country. Even though it's not a pretty picture, we can still intercede on the country's behalf uh, and petition the Most High through his son, Yahusha HaMashiach. And so in verses uh, 1 through 18 in chapter 5, Jeremiah reviews... Jerusalem's pitiful condition after the Babylonian destruction, and he asks the Lord to remember his people. And he lists seven things that took place in, in, those, in those verses, in 
verses of uh, 2 through 14. Uh, there were people homeless. We have that today in our country on a massive scale in America. More so now, with the, especially in North, in, um, North Carolina, Western North Carolina, uh, that's, uh, and also the wildfires in Wyoming and, and in other places in Florida uh, due to Hurricane uh, Milton. People are fatherless, he says in verse 3. Again, identify with me, if you will, hungry. There are people hungry in our country, not able to afford groceries. They were just talking about that on the radio, on the ham radio. Uh, they're persecuted. There are people being persecuted. That's happening on a grand scale today in our country, especially with people that profess faith in Jesus, in Yahusha. They will be pers they are being persecuted and they will be continually persecuted in this country. Women ravished. What happens when a country is taken over or a city or the women are ravished, they're taken advantage of. And that's happened in Israel at this time. The nobles, the, the important, you know, the, the elected officials, the nobles were hung, he says here in verse 12. And the old and the young were subjected to abuse and slavery. And what's happening in our country with child trafficking to, a, to the amount of numbers so big, you can't even comprehend them. Um, the young uh, abused and the old abused as well taken advantage of by those that um, can take advantage of them. The people do it willingly because their hearts are evil. And then in uh, verse 5 through 18, he talks about the sadness. Jeremiah summarizes the people's plight, declaring that our dancing has turned to mourning, mourning, cry, mourning. Uh, then he asks in 19 through 22, in those verses, he asserts that the Lord remains the same forever and calls upon him to restore his people once again. Again, that's made over and over again in the Bible, the, in the, both in the renewed covenant and in the, in the first covenant, that he remains the same forever. It says in the book of Hebrews, Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He's un the unchanging one. He doesn't waft from one thing to another. And listen to these four closing verses and we'll end our study today. Verse 19 through 22. He says, Thou, O Lord, remainest forever. That's where he's saying you are unchanging. Thy throne from generation to generation. He's unchanging. Verse 20. Wherefore, he asks this question, Wherefore dost thou forget us forever? And forsake us so long time? In other words, you know, you're, you're forgetting us. Why are you forgetting us for such a long time? Please turn and come back and remember us. Again, verse 21, he says, Turn thou us unto thee. So he petitions the Most High to turn the people back to him. And that's exactly what we need to do today. Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. That's like repentance is turning. Turning from our sin, walking away from it, and turning towards the Most High and obedient to His prescription for our lives, His law, His Torah, His commandments. Renew our days as of old. Renew our days as of old. And in verse 22, But thou hast utterly rejected us, Thou art very wroth against us. In other words, they were already in captivity. And he says in this lament, this final verse in lamentation, but thou hast utterly rejected us and thou art very wroth with us, angry with us. Why? Because the people needed to be taken captive for a long time to understand the mistakes that they made and then turn back to him. And I hope and pray that does not happen to us here in this country. I pray that we can turn now, now, right now, like he says in verse 21, to him, and that he will renew our days as of old. You know, I have a, an 83-year-old father and an 81-year-old 81, 81 mother, and um, 
they always talk about, you know, the olden days. And I'm sure if you have parents alive still, you remember, or grandparents, they talk about the days of old, the olden days, how good life was. And me being, um, you know, uh, going on 62, I could talk about days in like the 70s and the 80s where, you know, you could go out and play without having a fear of getting kidnapped. You could eat the food without having the fear of getting poisoned. You know, you could do certain things. You had freedoms. Yeah, we didn't have all the gadgets and all the electronics that we have today. But life was good. Much better than it is now, I believe. And so we need to turn. We need to recognize our sin in this country. Recognize that one or, one or other of a party, two wings of the same bird are not going to save us. It takes one heart at a time to be turned and changed and focused on Messiah. Uh, and that's where we need to be today in this country. And that's my study today um, in Lamentations chapter 5. And it's not a pretty picture. It's certainly not a pretty, pretty picture this October 13th, 2024. And I pray that it changes for the better. Yah bless everyone. Anthony signing off.